In last week's podcast, I raised the question, time to buy Pfizer and Tesla. And if you had bought Tesla on the Monday by Thursday, you would be in for a 10% gain as Tesla moved from 210 to over $230. But come Friday and Tesla fell a little bit back, still ending the week in a slight plus. Same goes for Pfizer and this, my friends, are not so bad. As the market had the worst market, especially Nasdaq, the worst week since 2023, falling 5.78%. And uh, not such a good week for Dow Jones either, down 2.93% to 40,345 points, just above the $40,000 support. You are listening to the Stock Investor Youth Podcast Trading Tips with Jim as we're heading into week 37. And I will, as usual, try to give you my guess for what will happen in the week ahead of us. Uh, let me agree, it will be a red week. And we will know if the $1,000 challenge had to take a loss or if it was able to go in green. You will know that by the end of the podcast. And I know most of you lost money last week. It's really hard to make money uh, in such a red week. Personally, uh, actually, I managed to go slightly in plus, and uh, some of the reason for this was NEO. I told you about NEO. We had NEO in the $1,000 challenge uh, uh, before last trade. We are into fate now. But before that, it was NEO. We had to take a slight loss in NEO. But I told you, I think NEO is a good, good buy. It's just about time. It was cut by stop loss last time. But this week, NEO had such a rebounds after posting better quarter results than expected. Pushing NEO up, 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 and is now sitting, I believe, just above $5. So that would have been into a fantastic trade. And I told you personally, I have uh, used this opportunity to buy into EVs as they've been hammered. I bought two times into EVs. I will do one more buy into EVs because in the long run, I think that is a good place to be. And I've argued that uh, most likely they will hold a little bit better if market is going down. So thanks to Neo and a few others mentioned again, war stocks and all, I was able to hold slight green in such a red week. Happy about that. But most of the reason for this was I was expecting markets to take a downturn and I had adjusted my portfolio accordingly. And I've been repeating this over and over again in the podcast to think also long term, not only short term. But for the week ahead of us, it is consumer price numbers on Wednesday that will get the main focus. Nothing really is expected from them other than to show uh, inflation is somewhat under control. You want it to be under 2%. It's expected to come into 26 And I do not expect inflation numbers to show really any of expectations. You have to understand that the U.S. election is coming up in two weeks, uh, sorry, two months in U.S., and all numbers that you will see moving forward in terms of economy will be at the best they can be presented. That is just the way it is. And later, of course, they will be revised, just like job numbers was revised uh, last month, uh, showing more one more million unemployed. It is uh, sad that it has to be this way, but uh, this is how politics and economy works. Job numbers last week, by the way, came in a little. Uh, the most of the numbers were actually negative uh, about the jobs created in the economy, etc. But uh, the main number uh, went down. Unemployment rate went down from 4.3 to 4.2. But uh, this is just temporary. After going up from 3.6 month after month after month after month, it had the first slight downtick uh, overall uh, for. August Thursday will be more job numbers coming in, uh, but there is no real expectations for this. We see slowing in the economy everywhere, and page up, page down. You can read about companies, reorganizations, uh, laying off people, planning to lay off people, even employer uh, surveys shows that most uh, employers are very uncertain about their uh, job opportunities moving forward. 
many of them even fear for the job. So while the numbers are celebrated in the big media, the, uh, the main numbers are showing all the same cracks in the economy. Will we get off that so-called soft landing or are we actually in a hard landing? You will know very, very soon. As I said, just wait till the election is over and we will get back to more reality. And the reality is one of the things that I try to uh, introduce in the podcast, uh, but you have to understand that even I have my biases, and biases is one of the things that can make you lose money. So that will be the very first stock tips uh, or trading tips, uh, hopefully a new one uh, if you're a new listener. Make sure to remove as much bias as you can. When you look at the stock, uh, the main rule is follow your first instinct. That is usually the one instinct that will be the most correct one. But then, after looking at the stock, you start to add a lot of different biases, either your own or other people's opinions or what you read in the news. And you cannot be guaranteed that that is correct. How can you reduce uh, bias? One of the things is trying to use automated tools because these have some sort of bias, of course, but they have less bias than, for instance, an analyst opinion, uh, some person on the finance uh, commentary section's uh, opinions. While some of these are really good, you have to understand there is a bias. As I told, I have my personal bias as well. You want to try to uh, have less bias. So going for automated tools which just are cold calculating. Personally, I love technical analysis for these things. Or read enough news, have enough sources of information to get so many biases that you actually end up in uh, so many different biases that it is somewhat neutral. It is uh, absolutely one thing that will uh, help you in your trading. And on top of this, of course, you should build strategies, how you trade uh, based on big trends, how you set your stop losses to avoid deep losses. And as I said, most of you probably had huge losses last week. Some of these could have been avoided if you put a stop loss. Setting the correct stop loss is always hard. Uh, we try to offer at stockinvest.us, we try to offer you a uh, stop loss. Uh, but in general, you try to set the stop loss based on the volatility, how much the stock is moving up and down. So you are not cut by a natural move during intraday. You have to make sure for that. Uh, and of course, it's a little bit about your uh, pain limit. And as you move into technical analysis, you can set these stop limits based on different support levels because if they are broken and i argued that last week uh, about nasdaq what would happen if nasdaq break this level uh, uh, what will happen uh, and uh, you can just see the result other things on the agenda this week uh, <coughs> is jobless numbers on thursday but nothing really big is expected from them oracle will have court results today while on Thursday will be Adobe and Kruger, and uh, together with uh, consumer price index numbers will be Manchester United on Wednesday. For those loving football and uh, trading, football shares. For the week ahead of us, and if we look uh, at the charts, there is uh, a higher chance for continuous fall, then further upturn. Nasdaq clearly shows a huge sell signals from the relation between the short and the long. Relative strength index is still not oversold, so there is no buy signal from relative strength index, and getting this low, things can usually fall even a little faster. But we are very, very close to a terrain where you should have a natural bounce up. The trend uh, suggests that uh, Nasdaq should uh, continue uh, almost down to 16,000 before bouncing up. Some support at today's level means that there is a fair chance that we will have a green uh, day today, tomorrow. We'll head upwards to uh, roughly 17,000 points where it will struggle uh, with the resistance at 17,000 and uh, then could start to fall down again. 
Last week I told you uh, Nasdaq is in a falling trend. I, uh, I cannot really see Nasdaq moving up in the longer term moving forward. And that is even more established now. First positive sign is if Nasdaq turns above 17,000 with a real solid volume, uh, creates a pivot bottom, and we manage to go above previous tops because now the tops are getting lower and lower, confirming the falling trend. For the week ahead of us, uh, as I said, I believe it's a higher chance that Nasdaq will uh, go down then it will go up, but there is a good chance that it will start, at least try to start the week in green, pushing upwards to 17,000 before it again will fall down. Hopefully I'm wrong, that Nasdaq just con uh, pushes upwards, and if it does, first resistance at 17,000 uh, points, and then it follows just a few hundred points above that, it gets into a really heavy belt of uh, resistance. Uh, and uh, that one is so hard that I cannot see, unless there is some real magic happening, I cannot see Nasdaq going above 17,500 anytime soon. It's simply too much. Little support, as I said, uh, uh, under today's level, then resistance at 17,000, arguing for maybe a good start on the week, but by the end of the week, I actually think it will be red. Quickly, just looking at, uh, and say, uh, Nifty 50 in uh, India, since I know a lot of you have uh, a lot of you followers are from India, happy about that. India is a growing economy, and a lot of traders uh, are getting into the market every day. Last week I said uh, it looked a little better for uh, India than US, and uh, overall India did better than US uh, week over week. Lays in a better uprising trend, still a rising trend, uh, breaking down, had a reaction down, also giving sell signals from the long term, uh, sorry, short term moving average, still a buy signal from the long term moving average. It's a fair chance that uh, you will have a slightly uh, red week uh, at the uh, National Stock Exchange of India, but it should pick uh, up, I believe, anytime soon and continue within the trend. It's at least a higher chance than for Nasdaq. So still I remain more positive to uh, Asia uh, than US uh, and European market currently. Let's quickly just look at the buy and sell signals before getting to the $1,000 challenge. And the signal says that across all stocks that we analyze, 23% hold buy signals is still not oversold. Going to New York Stock Exchange, getting down to 11, and this is getting absolutely close. So uh, there is a buying opportunity coming up in the market. Will it be by the end of this week or will it be next week? I don't know, but for sure there should be a bounce up anytime soon. Personally, I believe that we will have to go to uh, oversold on the relative strength index. Uh, and again, a lot of repetition here, but I think maybe markets will start green end red by the end of the week but come next week maybe early uh, next week and we could be in for a nice uh, bounce up uh, where it's possible to do some really nice bounce up trades how do i use this information personally well as i told you uh, over and over again i've been reducing my uh, uh, market shares uh, stocks going on down and down and down and reorganizing into what i thought would be safe to handle a fall and with Nasdaq at 11%, uh, I uh, think that during the week I probably will take some Nasdaq positions. I expect to start with a little losses, but I believe that we are in for a rebound very soon. So I probably will snatch up not much, but a few stocks as uh, I see them cheap. Could very well be Nivida, for instance. Uh, or other companies, I think some of these companies will have uh, a slight rebound. Should be very easy, uh, or at least possible, to make five ten percent on the rebounds. Going to New York Stock Exchange is thirty two. It's still quite high, and uh, London at nineteen, Frankfurt at twenty three, Tokyo at eighteen, uh, Chesson at sixteen, and the National Stock Exchange of India at thirty five. Sum it up, markets are still not totally, I mean to, uh, the markets overall, are still not totally oversold. 
So there is no real flashing boy signals. The only thing uh, flashing some Moto K signals is Nostock and uh, knowing the index weight of Nostock, this is highly tied up to Nevida uh, and some of the seven other major stocks. I believe there is a buying opportunity coming in uh, these stocks. I don't recommend anyone to trade uh, geared products. It's an easy way to lose money. But I have to say that the possible uh, option into some of the big tech stocks might not be a, a bad idea. Especially if uh, we get uh, some nervous falls during the week that we get into these uh, days where the market uh, abruptly could just be a slight information goes down 2-3% uh, and you get an overreaction that will typically be a very very good position to uh, get into some of these stocks I believe and uh, expecting for a rebound to take place maybe end of this week early next week sometime having a weak horizons a little bit more and I think there should be a rebound opportunity 16 minutes into the podcast, $1,000 challenge. So how are we doing? Was into fate. Fate was doing good. Last week, fate struggled during the week. It was uh, up and down, ending the week at 3.39. And actually, we are currently sitting in a slight loss in fate after being positive uh, on the trade. Will I still continue uh, to sit in fate? Yes, I will not sell fate yet. I think there is more options in faith uh, and uh, right now I think it's a very very good buying opportunity there is uh, always a slight chance that uh, things will just continue uh, downwards we have no uh, option for that and that may trigger a stop loss and a second stock being sold with loss of the NEO as I said before faith we had NEO and NEO was sold with a slight loss, but I think we will see somewhat the same like NEO, that it just needs time and the right market conditions and it pushes up or the target still for fate is uh, $5 plus. No changes in the $1,000 challenge, NEO still remains in. We are sitting just a little bit above $3,000 and uh, hopefully, hopefully we can bring it up to $4,000, meaning that the $1,000 has grown to over $3,000, but we needed to move much more than that. It was a hard struggle last week with Nostop being down almost 6%. End of the podcast. Nothing more to add other than I hope your portfolio will be greener by the end of the week than it was in the beginning of the week. And I really hope that you will have a good week. Uh, and of course, that you will be back next week. We will sum up this week and see what is happening moving forward. Until then, just have a good time. Bye. Welcome to StockInvest.us Stock Analysis. We remind you that trading involves a high risk of losing money and that you should speak with a financial advisor before buying or selling any securities. You should not base your investment decision upon StockInvest.us. By using the information you agree and are held liable for your own investment decisions.